Hello, and welcome to another Windows Phone How Do I video. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use the Windows Phone Marketplace Test Kit to pre-test an application, which will help you to identify and fix any issues you find before you submit your app to the Marketplace. This tool will run a standard set of tests that will not only help you pass the Marketplace tests, but will also help you deliver a better app. Also, these test cases will get updated over time, making this tool even more useful. The test kit is already integrated into Visual Studio with the Windows Phone SDK. To use it, simply open an existing Windows Phone solution targeting Windows Phone OS 7.1. The first thing I'll do is right-click the project to test and select Open Marketplace Test Kit, or I could open it directly from the project menu. So this is what the Marketplace Test Kit looks like, opened in a new tab. You may see a notification at the bottom saying that Marketplace Test Cases have been updated and asking you to update. You should always choose to update so that you are running the latest versions of the tests because Marketplace requirements can change. After updating, you will have to close and restart the test kit. The tabs here on the left are categories of tests that you'll run. As you can see, some are fully automated, others must be monitored, and some are purely manual. We'll start with the top tab, which is Application Details. First, notice that the Application Package box shows the path to the bin release folder. You must create a release build of your application and use that to pass the automated and monitored tests. You could also test any ZAP file, even without the source, just by renaming it to the same name as the ZAP you built in the steps above. Below the application package name, you'll see a number of gray squares. This is where you must place your required graphics. Each square tells you the size, in pixels, for the PNG images that you must place here, and what image will be used for. So I'm going to go ahead and use those browse buttons to quickly load all of the appropriate images. Now you might notice that one of those images seems a little off. That's because I deliberately loaded a bad image so that you can see what happens when an image doesn't pass the testing. If you don't yet have all the graphics for your final app, perhaps because you're doing some interim testing, then you can actually skip this part and still run all the tests. This part will of course fail, but you'll still get useful information from the other tests. A screenshot of the application is also going to be required. Now the easiest way to do that is to just use the emulator. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the emulator. I'll launch the application. And as soon as I get to the application to a point where I want to take a screenshot, I can then bring up the additional tools, and then go to the third tab, which allows me to capture a screenshot. And of course I can save it. And this is nice because it automatically takes shots in the required size, which is 480 by 800 pixels. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and exit the emulator, return to the Marketplace Test Kit, and then in the first required screenshot, I'll go ahead and browse and go out to the desktop where I've placed that image. Now let's move to the automated tests tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on the run tests button. It should only take a few moments to run those tests and you can see that one of the tests failed. In fact, it's telling me that I've got a ping that is not valid or it doesn't have the required size. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Application Details tab. And then for the Small Application tile, I'll browse and let's just check. The Bad Small App tile, in fact, is 87 by 81, so that's why there's the problem. We'll go down and check on the right image, and the right image shows that of course, it's 99 by 99, which is what is expected. So we'll go ahead and add that, save everything, and then go back and run the automated tests again. Now, everything passes this time, which is good. And I do want to point out that 
uh, the capability validation. That actually tests the capabilities against the application manifest. So if there's a problem with passing that test, you might be able to just simply remove from the application manifest all the capabilities that are not listed. Next, let's move to the monitored tests tab. So these tests require you to use an actual physical Windows Phone device rather than the emulator. So you'll need to make sure that on the menu you've selected Windows Phone device and you must attach a physical device and make sure that that device is synced to Zune and unlocked. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on the Start Application button. And then what you're doing, and you won't see it here on the screen, but what you'd be doing is exercising all the capabilities of your application. So you'll navigate forward and backward, you'll use context menu items, you'll uh, use dialog boxes. If the application accesses the network, you would want to test that. And you can see from the description of the tests here that you need to test anything that could throw an exception, peak memory consumption, or use the back button. When you're done, close the application with the phone back button or using the close application button on the marketplace test kit page. Again, you'll see what passed and what needs fixing right here. It's good practice to check the tests that passed to see if any of them are marginal passes where the numbers are close to the limits. If so, you should try to improve those scores or risk a failure when you submit to the marketplace. Like monitor tests, manual tests must be completed on a device, not the emulator. Now, if you look at the monitor tests tab, you'll see that the right-hand column shows you and describes the test to perform. You simply follow the instructions and then manually select whether the test passed or failed. Let's select one. We're going to go down and pick this back button first screen test. So it tells us to launch the application and press the back button. Now, even though you should be running these on a physical device, I'm going to run on the emulator just so you can see what it is that we're doing. So I'm going to launch the application and you notice that I'm not debugging, so I'm not connected. So it's really not doing any monitoring, but I can click the back button and see that nothing is happening. So I know that that test didn't do what it was supposed to do. I simply go back into the manual test page, find the test in question, it's actually the next one down, and simply indicate that it's failed. Now there's a yellow bar at the top, if I scroll up, that will show me how many tests have passed, how many have failed, and how many are pending. I could go on to do other tests and wait until later to start fixing the problems I found, or I could go ahead and work on one problem at a time. I'm going to go ahead and go to the code and fix this right away. Now, uh, I happen to notice that I've got a default back key press event handler, and maybe I was using it earlier in my development, and then I changed the application, but apparently I forgot to remove it, and that's what's keeping the back button from behaving normally. I'll just remove that event handler and then I'll go ahead and save and try the application again. Once again using the emulator so that you can see what's happening but uh, don't forget these manual tests should really be run on a physical device. So after waiting for the app to launch remember the test is simply from the first screen to click the back button and make sure that it worked which it did so now all I have to do is go back to the marketplace test kit, locate the failed test, and then update it to show that it now has passed. And if you go back to the top, you'll notice that I now have one passed and 49 to go. And if you need more explanation or more information about any of these manual tests, simply click on the more info and it will open a browser and take you to an MSDN page just on that particular topic. So there it is, a quick walkthrough of how to use the Marketplace Test Kit to pre-test your application and ensure a smooth submission to the Windows Phone Marketplace. Thank you very much.